Gotta go. Gotta see things. See new faces and brand new things. Gotta go places and do things. Maybe to forget it. What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you're new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we're in the brand new 2024 Chevy Traverse, courtesy of Sioka Chevrolet in York, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So we're in this one today because this is the start of the next generation Traverse. It has a completely new look. It has a new Z71 off-road trim as well, which coincidentally is the trim we are in today so that's pretty exciting and in case you were curious this one is going to be competing with other super large SUVs like the Toyota Grand Highlander and the Volkswagen Atlas just to name a couple but ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2024 traverse first one being the ls starting at forty thousand nine hundred and ninety five dollars got the lt for forty three thousand three ninety five z71 the one we're in today going for forty seven thousand seven ninety five and the rs starting at fifty seven thousand five hundred and ninety five dollars but regardless of the trim level that you go with the power plant on the traverse is going to be the same powering this beast is a 2.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder putting out 328 horsepower at 5,500 RPM, 326 pound-feet of torque coming in at 3,500 RPM, power sent to all four wheels. Yes, all-wheel drive does come standard, by the way. That is awesome. That power being sent to the ground through an eight-speed automatic with paddle shifters. Zero to 60 times should come in at approximately seven seconds flat, with MPG numbers coming in at 19 in the city, 24 on the highway, taking regular unleaded fuel. But so that before we do any kind of fun acceleration or paddle shifter test in the Traverse, I did want to mention to you guys the drive modes because there are several of them and the button is kind of hidden or at least not what I'm used to seeing. A lot of times I'm used to finding the drive modes within the infotainment screen or right around the cup holders here in the center. But the drive modes in the Traverse are actually located just by the driver's left knee. There's a little button that's labeled mode. You got tow and haul mode. You have normal, of course. You have sport. You have off-road because we have the Z71. There's also a terrain mode. Uh, so quite a bit of different drive modes going on for the Traverse. So I like that. So anyways, adjusting things like the shift points, the throttle response, steering sensitivity, all-wheel drive system engagement, stuff like that. All right, so now having got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find it straight away. Let's put the acceleration here to the test. And and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2024 Chevy Traverse here up to speed. All right, found our straightaway in three, two, one, go. No slipping, so that was good. There it is. <laughs> All right, there was a little bit of a turbo lag at the beginning, but it's nothing that would personally bother me, quite honestly. And who's really going to be racing a Traverse anyways? But once you get higher up in the RPM range, this thing really wants to get up and go. So for acceleration, for merging onto highways and things like that, you're definitely not going to have any issues with the Traverse. I, I personally don't mind that at all. And the 8-speed automatic also was buttery smooth. A lot of times, I don't know, I feel like I've been driving a lot of Mercedes lately, and sometimes it can be a little bit jerky, believe it or not. But I don't know, this was just so such a smooth transmission, such a kind of luxury-like acceleration, but still incredibly quick. So yeah, I don't have any issues with that whatsoever. I like it, but to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So as expected, you will find four-wheel ventilated disc brakes coming standard. As far as braking feel goes, it's actually fine. It's kind of on the firmer side of things. It's pretty much as I would expect a uh, uh, Traverse to brake. Like uh, I would expect the 60 to zero number to be maybe 125 feet or something like that. It's pretty much on par for the course. So in terms of braking feel, I definitely don't have any issues there. I got to take it out of the sport driving mode because this thing just wants to absolutely get up and go at any particular second here. I'll put it back in normal, but then touching on suspension and handling up front, you're going to get a McPherson strut front suspension in the back, independent five link rear suspension, but if you were to go with that RS trim level, you get a sportier suspension tune. So I wanted to mention that. Little better handling probably, but I bet you're gonna feel a little bit more of the road as well. And with the Z71, you're gonna get a slightly lifted suspension. So wanted to mention that as well. By the way, with a twin clutch all-wheel drive system for that Z71 that we have today too. So overall, as far as ride quality goes, it's probably one of the first things I noticed. This is a pretty darn smooth ride without a doubt. I love the ride quality. It's been absorbing York's road imperfections quite nicely because there's a lot of them, trust me. 
And uh, yeah, I definitely don't have any issues there. Steering feel is another thing I first noticed. Typically with larger SUVs, you have a very loosey goosey steering feel like the Toyota Grand Highlander, for example. And I prefer the heavier steering feel like this, like we're getting here in the Traverse, because it better points you in the direction that you wanna go. It gives the driver a little better feeling of being in control, better driver feedback, that kind of thing. So I love the steering feel in this thing, definitely right up my alley. Uh, as far as cabin noise goes, we're only going like 25 miles per hour right now. So typically I'd say, you guys be the judge of this through my road mic, but I'm not really going that fast. But honestly, even when I was, it's nothing that would personally bother me. So right on par for the course yet again. Touching on visibility, I will say there's a little bit of some blind spots back there in the back two corners, just because those third row windows are kind of like a, an interesting design. They're not as boxy as a, maybe they could be for a little better visibility, but just out of my rear view mirror though, I can see perfectly fine out of that. So again, something that probably wouldn't bother me. And I did wanna also mention though, if you go with the RS trim level, touching on a forward visibility, you actually get rain sensing windshield wipers with that. So whenever the Traverse detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's gonna automatically turn on those windshield wipers, kind of like automatic headlights. So that's always pretty cool too. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. I'm having fun in this one, but now let's go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new, completely redesigned, 2024 Chevy Traverse. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2024 completely redesigned Chevy Traverse. Let me know what you guys think of it in the comments. This one is finished in radiant red tin coat, in case you were curious of our exact exterior color name. But personally, I think this one looks a lot closer now to the Chevy Tahoe up front in terms of design. So I've always liked the way the Chevy Tahoe looks, so this is definitely a good thing. I love this look. Gloss black front grille, of course, on our Z71. I like the black emblems as well. You got the Z71 badging to go along with all that. All trims are gonna get LED headlights with LED daytime running lights. You get the automatic feature along with automatic high beams. So when you have your high beams on at night and sense the vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's gonna automatically dim them back to low beams. Then when that vehicle is gone, it's gonna automatically bounce it back up to high beams for there. So that is pretty darn cool. And I gotta love these bright red tow hooks. You get them on both sides, of course, for the Z71. So that looks stinking cool. And you do have some front air curtains, if you guys can see those to the corners there. That helps direct air around the wheel and tire combination so definitely a big fan of that it looks like we got some front skid plates underneath too probably because we have the z71 so definitely a very nice look in my opinion i think chevy did a wonderful job with the redesign of the traverse this thing is such a beast it looks like a beast especially under a z71 but and so by the way like i mentioned to you guys we do have the raised suspension on the z71 in case anybody was curious in terms of ground clearance as far as that goes the regular Traverse, the non-Z71 Traverse, I should say, comes in at 7.5 inches. If you went with the Z71 like we have today, that's going to bump that up to 7.7 .7 inches. I think it's like 7.76 or something like that. So just a slight difference there. Not a heck of a difference, but wanted to give you guys those numbers in case you wanted them. That pretty much rounds out the front end. Let's now go ahead and swing around to the side. All right, and so now since we are around to the side of this one, all the way to the top, you're going to find those gloss black roof rails. They definitely look good. Rear privacy glass does come standard. You got a little bit of a floating roof line towards the back. That's why that rear window is a little bit different of a shape. It's kind of a design element, I guess you could say, but got the traverse lettering found on the front doors in typical Chevy fashion. They do that with all of their vehicles. We got some gloss black side mirrors. They are power adjustable. They are heated. You get LED integrated turn signals then as well. But look at these wheels, man. These wheels look so dang good on the Z71. And of course, the wheel sizes are going to differ depending upon the trim level that you go with got some wrangler all-terrain tires of course because this is the z71 you are not going to get all-terrain tires with the other trim levels so wanted to point that out this one is built for off-roading so that is pretty darn cool i love the side profile let's now go ahead and make our way to the back all right and so now since we are around to the back of this one all the way to the top you will find a body colored shark fin antenna just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light just below that rear window wiper of course LED taillights do come standard. And actually, let me show you guys the design of these LED taillights. You guys know, when I went around the side of this, I was like, oh, that's a Lexus. That is a Lexus design 100%, which is a good thing. I mean, I love the Lexus design, but definitely love that. And I love that their LEDs added brightness at night, of course. So just below it all, it gets even better. Check this out, dual exhaust outlets with quad satin chrome tips. That looks so dang good. So I know this is an SUV, but I do believe you guys know what we have to do next here. 
as always, here is that exhaust clip. Alright, so Manassas, we are around to the back of the Traverse. When it comes to opening that rear lift gate, it is actually a power lift gate for every single trim level across the board. So you gotta love that. Even the LS trim level, it's a power lift gate. So that is pretty stinking cool. Once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 22.9 cubic feet behind that third row at least. If you were to fold that third row down, that bumps that up to 56.6 cubic feet. And then with all rows folded, 97.6 cubic feet. That is, that's a good a bit of space for comparison's sake the toyota grand highlander one of the competitors comes in at 97.5 cubic feet so basically identical there volkswagen atlas 96.8 cubic feet so ultimately the traverse has them all beat so that is quite kind of cool but chrome plated tie down anchors do come standard back there you got a 12 volt power outlet and there's actually plenty of space for me to even lie down comfortably back there so that was pretty cool and if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor you're actually going to find an absolute ton of in-floor storage back there to my surprise it's a good bit more than i'm used to seeing but then making our way up to the third rear legroom that comes in at 32.1 inches for reference i mean even six feet tall this was a little bit tight for me but kids should be fine back in that third row i wouldn't have any issues there uh led interior lighting does come standard i like that rear ventilation on the ceiling of the traverse as well that was pretty cool also for those third row passengers though you, they do get a little bit of cup holders and a little bit of storage next to the cup holders but also usb charging ports on both sides in the back in the third row that is pretty stinking cool as well so always love seeing that then making our way up to the second row legroom that's going to come in at 41.4 inches for reference i'm an even six feet tall still this is how much space i have back there bench seating is going to come with the ls however the lt and up is going to give you captain's chairs in case you were curious how that worked and the captain's chairs by the way get armrests too they don't always get that so i wanted to emphasize that another really cool thing about the uh second rear passengers is that tri-zone climate control comes standard for all trim levels so the rear passengers can actually set their own temperatures back there if they really wanted to usb charging ports of course for the second row passengers then as well but they also get a 120 volt power outlet at least for the lt trim level enough the ls is not going to get that but that's pretty cool so you could charge up a drill or hair straightener or whatever the case back there i like that no rear window sunshades that i was able to find unfortunately and if you wanted heated rear seats go with the rs trim level because that's the only trim level that's going to give it to you but so they make your way up to the front seats manually adjustable front seats do come standard for the ls however eight-way power driver seat with power lumbar coming with the lt trim level and up you're going to find a premium cloth finish for the ls lt and Z71 perforated leather for the RS and then there's a leatherette option that we had on this particular Z71 here. Heated front seats do come standard actually for all trim levels and then ventilated front seats coming with the RS only. As far as seat comfort goes, it was plenty fine in my short little test drive here today so absolutely no issues there. Then taking a look at the steering wheel, it is power adjustable for the RS, manually adjustable for all other trims. It is leather wrapped for all trim levels and to my surprise it is actually heated for all trim levels as well. Did not expect to find that so that is pretty stinking cold but now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup and let me start by showing you guys the key here you got your chevy logo on the one side then when you flip it over a ton of buttons lock unlock button to pop the rear tailgate there the remote start button the circular button that is standard for all trim levels across the board by the way so that is pretty cool and keyless entry with the push button start of course does come standard so all i'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button and so once started up the tech is actually really good on the traverse so i'm including the gauges in that because you got an 11 inch digital gauge cluster that definitely looks good there's actually a button on the steering wheel where you can completely customize it there's four different loadouts so essentially four different looks that you can choose from the display up there of course it's got all your basics as well like trip a trip b digital 
digital speedometer if you wanted that. Um, tachometer as well. How many miles do you have left until you hit empty? Outside temperature, the list goes on. Um, the cool thing about digital gauges is they really are customizable, so you could put whatever you want up there. So that was pretty cool. But then making our way to overall interior quality, a panoramic sunroof comes standard on the RS. It's going to be optional on the Z71, an option we don't have with us here today. LED interior lighting, like I said, does come standard. Overhead sunglass holder, though, also coming standard. Universal garage door opener is going to be optional on all trims but the RS. That's weird. So the RS is not going to even be able to get it, but all the other trims can get it if you want it. Red accents found under Z71. I love that. I thought those looked pretty stinking cool inside this one. Wireless phone charger for the LT trim level and up. I'll show that to you guys here. And since we're here, 12 volt power outlet just in front of that. Um, your cup holders are just behind that. And if you were to open up that center armrest, there is actually a decent amount of space within there, as expected, I guess, in the size of an SUV. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the info entertainment screen here you are looking at a 17.7 inch color touchscreen display that's probably the largest screen i've ever reviewed in any vehicle that's the screens are getting so big these days bluetooth and audio streaming android auto apple carplay and yes it is wireless that comes standard you gotta love that um, you actually control the headlights through the infotainment screen that's something that uh, I'm not a huge fan of. Maybe it's just that I'm not used to it, but you go to my controls, I guess, through this uh, icon here, and um, that's where you're able to turn on and off the headlights. But I guess you just set it on auto and just let it be, and that pretty much will have you covered. But it's still kind of weird that there's not a button for that. Also, you could check out your climate control settings up there, along with uh, vehicle statistics as well, and your radio information. And so when it comes to the sound systems, there are two of them. Six speakers is gonna come on the LS, LT, and Z71 trims. However, there is a 10 speaker Bose sound system that comes standard on the RS. It is optional on the LT and Z71, an option that we do have today. So you gotta love it. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next here. Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. <laughs> That Bose sound system is incredible. That sounds an amazing, it's an amazing sound system, especially for a vehicle the size of the Traverse. This thing is massive. So they needed a good sound system to go with all of this space. A lot of times SUVs don't give you that, but the Traverse did a banging job with that Bose sound system. I had a Bose sound system in my Infiniti G35 Coupe back in the day. It never failed me, it never broke. Bose is a very reputable company that is known for reliability basically in terms of sound system. So yeah, that crushed it. And so the last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the Traverse in reverse, we will find a rear view camera. That sounded funny. You will find a rear view camera coming stated across the board along actually with that surround view monitor there to the left. So that gives you that bird's eye view, letting you know what is completely all around you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so I always start by mentioning the IIHS rating. However, this is too new and this one has not yet been rated by IIHS. So I'm not going to mention it. Do your own research there. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors and tethers to your children for three car seats. Rear child, Dolax, tire pressure monitoring system. That's all boring, but also coming standard, a good bit of advanced safety actually. Rear parking sensors, I love that. Rear cross traffic braking, speed limit assist, traffic sign recognition, reverse automatic braking, and there's a teen driver mode that prevents your teen driver from turning off the safety features. And if they do, it's logged in the system so you can see it. Blind zone steering assist, lane keep assist, lane departure warning, and automatic emergency braking then as well. And so when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Traverse, I'm just gonna keep it simple. I'm gonna give you two positives and two negatives. There are two new for improvement or whatever as far as the positives go i have to start with the cargo space is absolutely ridiculous the traverse actually is the biggest in its segment if you don't count the absolutely massive suvs like the tahoe and the suburban so you got 97.6 cubic feet of cargo space grand highlander comes in at 97.5 volkswagen atlas comes in at 96.8 so this one is the largest by just a little bit, but still it is the largest. So ton of space, brilliant road trip vehicle. I would definitely say I love the design as well. Chevy did a wonderful job with the redesign of this one. It looks a lot similar to the Tahoe now, which in my opinion, brilliant. I love the design of the Tahoe and the Suburban. Essentially, they look like the same thing, but now this looks pretty darn similar too. So well done, Chevy. As far as room for improvement goes, I'll give you two things here. 
One, there's no headlight button anywhere besides on the infotainment screen. That's wonky, I don't like that. I wish there was a button kind of on the left side by the drive mode button, and uh, that would have been brilliant, or just a stock button on uh, coming off the steering wheel or something. You actually have to go into the infotainment screen, find the light settings, and turn on the headlights that way, or just leave it on auto, because probably, honestly, that's what most people do these days, but I still like having a switch or a button of some kind for that, that's just my personal preference. And the other thing is, is the powertrain here. So I'm sure the turbocharged four cylinder is perfectly fine, but this is a large SUV. And what I'm looking for these days is the fuel economy to go along with all of that. It doesn't have to be electric. Matter of fact, I wouldn't even pick electric over a nice hybrid powertrain. So if Chevy could do what Toyota did with the Grand Highlander, giving it an optional hybrid powertrain, I believe it's a four cylinder mix with a, a dual motor hybrid system system that gives it 36 miles per gallon in the vehicle of this size that is insane so that's something i would personally be looking for and chevy if you can do that even as an option for this one keep the turbocharged four cylinder but also add that option available that would be pretty darn good because gas prices are high and a hybrid four cylinder would definitely help out with that i'm just saying but let me know what you guys think in the new traverse in the comments section below that's about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe to the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews because that's what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video, stay gold.